Remember that hilarious old meme, just download more RAM? Was it just a joke or can you actually download more RAM on your PC? Well, you can't literally download more RAM or any hardware from the internet, duh. But Linux gives us a pretty clever magic trick which comes really close to downloading more RAM. In this video, we are diving into the fantastic world of ZRAM and we'll see what it is, how it works and how it can make your computer feel snappier. I'll show you how to install and configure ZRAM on your Linux step by step. What exactly is ZRAM? ZRAM is a Linux kernel module that creates a compressed block device inside the RAM. It's like a mini hard disk drive inside your RAM but with built-in real-time compression. This is an extension of the ingenious swapping mechanism that Linux has. When your computer runs out of RAM, it starts writing RAM content onto your hard disk drive when you have swapping enabled. While this prevents the applications or the operating system from crashing, it can make a computer extremely slow when swapping because a hard disk drive or even an SSD is exponentially slower than your RAM. ZRAM technology, instead of moving RAM content to the hard disk, moves it to a compressed block on the RAM itself. Think of it like squeezing more clothes into your suitcase with a vacuum pump. Your suitcase is still the same size, but you can definitely fit more clothes in it now. Using modern compression algorithms like Z standard, ZRAM can compress your RAM content with minimal CPU overhead, and this compression ratio can be substantial at times. Even by going conservative numbers, it's not a big deal to see 1 GB of data compressed into 500 MBs. Yeah, this compression and decompression does use CPU cycles, but modern compression techniques like Z standard and LZ04 are very efficient and this additional CPU overhead is going to be very small. The end result, even while performing similar computing operations as before, because of this compression technique, you will end up having more RAM available to be used. Congratulations, you just downloaded more RAM. Alright, ready to try ZRAM? ZRAM is in fact very easy to install and set up on Ubuntu. This method can be followed on any version of Ubuntu, Linux Mint, Pop OS, Zorin OS, Debian and other Debian based distributions. Some distributions like Fedora have started pre-installing ZRAM because it's that effective. Let's jump in. Open a terminal, type in sudo apt update and hit enter. Ubuntu and Debian provide the ZRAM tools package which automates most of the setup. Let's go ahead and install it. sudo apt install ZRAM tools. This will install a service called ZRAM swap and will configure ZRAM for you. It also provides the ZRAM control utility that sets up the default configuration. Once the command finishes running, just restart your computer and yeah, that's that. ZRAM should be up and running on your computer. You can verify this by running swap on show command. You will see a line for ZRAM 0 or even more ZRAM entries here showing up as swap partitions. This means ZRAM has been successfully installed, set up and is running. Some Linux distributions and some other methods of installing ZRAM will give you a completely configured ZRAM out of the box. But this needs a little bit of tweaking. The configuration file has very good defaults out of the box. But the thing is, all these defaults are commented out, so they're not actually in effect. We need to manually remove the comments. For you, if there are no hash signs here before these parameters, you may leave them as they are. Open the configuration file located in slash etc slash defaults called zram swap using the nano editor with this command. First up, we need to uncomment the algorithm parameter. The default LZ4 is completely fine and it provides good speed. But Z standard is a newer compression algorithm and while it's slightly slower than LZ4, its compression ratio is very good. So let's go ahead and set Z standard. Then uncomment the size. By default, ZRAM is configured to use 50% of your RAM and this is perfect for 90% of use cases. And change this only if you know exactly what you're doing. But don't go overboard with this. Finally, uncomment the priority parameter. The default is set to 100. Keep it as it is, so that ZRAM is used before disk swapping is used. A very detailed yet brief idea of what each of these parameters do is given here. This configuration file comments are really helpful. You press Ctrl plus O to write the changes to the file, press enter and then press Ctrl plus X to close the nano editor. Restart the computer, run the swap on show command and here it is. Done. All set. By the way, if you haven't already, check out my course Linux Mastery Express. I've designed this course to level up your Linux skills very quickly. With this course, you'll get so comfortable using the terminal commands that your friends will think you're a Linux wizard. 
you'll get perfect with the most used, most useful commands and also learn advanced things like using the V-Editor and shell scripting as well. Linux Mastery Express, link in the description, do check it out. Alright, ZRAM is cool, it's magic. But there is a certain demographic that benefits from this tech more than others. First being computers with 4GB RAM or less. This is ground zero for ZRAM magic. In fact, I think ZRAM is great for even computers with 8GB of RAM. Without ZRAM, your OS will constantly shuttle RAM data to a painfully slow disk, creating a noticeably huge performance bottleneck. For these computers, ZRAM creates a compressed swap space right in your RAM. And that gives you an instant memory expansion. While this is not doubling your RAM, it does radically slash disk I.O. for swap. And that's what makes your computer faster with ZRAM. So that old laptop collecting dust, those netbooks and raspberry pies. Put ZRAM on these babies right now. And even if you have a decent amount of RAM, but you are convicted of keeping too many tabs open in your browser or use memory hungry applications that are pushing close to your RAM capacity, multitaskers, yeah, this is going to be very helpful. And for advanced users who use RAM constrained servers or VPS, this can save you a few bucks. And finally, as advertised, ZRAM is for people who want to download more RAM. Before we end this video, I want you to understand that ZRAM is not a magic bullet. There are definitely few warnings and potential issues you should keep in mind. This is a big one. ZRAM works by compressing and decompressing RAM data on the fly and that takes CPU cycles. For most modern CPUs and typical workloads, this additional CPU usage is negligible and it's often outweighed by the massive performance gain we are going to get from avoiding the slow disk I.O. But yeah, this is something we have to keep in mind. Another huge drawback of using ZRAM is the allocated RAM memory becomes unavailable for normal RAM usage. Yeah, while ZRAM technically expands your usable memory by compressing data, it does so by utilizing a portion of your physical RAM to store that compressed data. So keep this in mind, don't go overboard with ZRAM size. A common starting point is 50%, it is the default and generally don't change it unless you know exactly what you're doing. Finally, ZRAM is not a real substitute for just getting more RAM, it enhances your RAM, that's all. You're not really downloading more RAM. There you have it guys. If you enjoyed this video, if you found it useful, definitely consider subscribing to the channel and also leave me a big thumbs up. And if you're interested in learning up your Linux skills, the link to my course Linux Mastery Express is given in the description below. It's designed to teach you Linux and take you from zero to hero in the shortest time possible. You'll be using Linux like a pro within a matter of hours. So definitely check that out. Next up, check out the top 15 hottest hacks that will supercharge your Linux desktop's performance to the next level and truly unlock your Linux. It's got some really cool tweaks, so definitely don't miss that. Alright, this is the next hacks, signing out.